She was connecting with these tiny deep muscles that don't even provide much movement at all. Uh, it helps the performance of the power movement muscles. And so we will back it up with research about the effectiveness of training the deep core and how it can improve not only your spine and your lower back and, and the support of your axial skeleton, but also improve the performance of all your other muscles. I was told a story about an NFL team in the off season and some of the players were offered to do some core stability training and other players opted out and they wanted to stick with the normal training regimen, which was, you know, lifting heavy weights, strength training, uh, power muscle training. And so the team was kind of split into two categories. The one category that focused on core training and specifically core stability, so the deeper muscles of the core, and the other group who could be like the control group who did the normal training and when it came to the end of the off season you have your tests you know your agility tests your speed tests and strength tests and it turned out that the group that focused on core stability training had larger gains in performance compared with the group that focused on strength and power training and so there was another study that i remember finding that talked about the highest level athletes in the world the superstars and it mentioned something that differentiated them, that separated them from normal athletes or even good athletes. Uh, there was something about these superstars that something happened in their core and it didn't happen in regular or even good athletes. And what that was, it was the sequence of events, the sequence of firing patterns of the muscles. And in these superstar athletes, the very first muscle group that fired was a contraction of the pelvic floor and those were the first muscles to fire in the sequence of events before any other muscle in the body came on so if you're talking about someone who's a sprinter right off the line the first thing that happens before they go into a stride is a deep core connection or or you know the pelvic floor muscle was the very first thing and then the leg muscles, the power muscles, the movement muscles came on. And now I want to go into a more recent study from 2022, I believe. This is a systematic review. And so I consider this to be a really high quality, as high of a quality form of evidence that you can find. Strong core muscles function as hubs in the biological motor chain. So this is important. Meanwhile, core training could increase stability and stiffness in the spine to reduce unrequired energy leaks and torso movement during the exertion of external loads. So it protects your back, essentially. If the foundation is not solid, then as the levers pull on them, there will be give. And that give is a reduction in performance. It leads to friction and it also leads to wasted energy. And so this is really what I am focused on when we talk about creating core stability. It's creating that solid foundation for your limbs to pull on. And so those limbs that give over time, that repetitive giving of the spine doesn't lead to repetitive trauma and friction. We want that foundation to be solid. And this entire topic was actually inspired by a student post who told a story of how he has had a long journey with back pain and he recently discovered that he could sit up from a laying down position and he hasn't been able to do that for many years and it was a really significant change for him because after the loss of that ability he tried many things to gain that back because that's very important to be able to sit up right and nothing was working and it was potentially causing more problems and so after completing uh, the beginning portion of this program, he realized that he was able to do this again. And this wasn't even really what he was training for. It was very significant. He mentioned that there were tears involved, tears of joy. He's still trying to figure this out, how this makes sense. How could training the deep core, these small muscles that are not even responsible for movement, improve his ability, his functional ability to do something like that. And so he says, I will certainly keep going. I can't wait to see what happens over the next couple of months. I'm still scratching my head on this one, trying to figure out why I'm suddenly able to sit up from lying down without rolling onto my side after only one week. The first week is very gentle, very subtle. So it's just that one week, you know, there's not a whole lot happening. So it's been pretty surprising to him that something like that could make a major shift in his functional abilities. Hope that the story I tell and the research that backs that up can help explain 
why strengthening stability muscles in your core that don't actually provide movement can improve the function of the power muscles because all these power muscles are is they are just levers pulling on a fulcrum and the stronger the fulcrum is the more solid that fulcrum is the more effective they are at doing their job and so that's what we do in the program is we strengthen the foundation we strengthen the fulcrum for physics to work better for levers to pull better and, and there's different types of levers in the body but all of them work better when they are connected to a solid foundation. Hit that like button to help spread the word that there is a solution to back pain and subscribe if you haven't already so that you can get notified next time I go live. Thanks again. Until next time, get down on the floor and connect to your core.